Well, welcome to our workshop for first generation students and finding research. Um, on behalf of the Center, Center for Undergraduate Research, Ali and I would like to welcome you to our workshop. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try try to help you find some research, um, talk about its importance a little bit, its impact, particularly with first generation college students, and just overall its impact on your career, your future, maybe in in um, graduate school, professional school, and beyond. So take it away, Ali. Definitely. Um, so just to like lay a foundation a little bit, um, talking about what research is, um, a lot of it is very uh, like critical thinking and taking um, either testing concepts or um, synthesizing data to try to develop new knowledge through critically analyzing different things. Um, at UF and at the undergraduate level in general, uh, it typically looks like somewhere between eight to 12 hours a week in the lab. Um, it could be more or less depending on who you're working with and what kind of project and in what capacity. Um, but you're typically either doing something in a field kind of setting, which could be out going out and collecting specimen for things, or um, in a lab setting, maybe you're doing, um, you know, pipetting kind of um, more technical skills. There's also uh, different aspects of data analysis and using different computer-based tools to do that. Um, so research can look like so many things is basically what I'm trying to say here. Um, and I hope that you all will be able to find the place at UF that has the research that's right for you because there are just so many different options. Um, so as uh, you're beginning to look for research, um, I'm not sure if anyone wants to share like what year you guys are um, first. Does anyone first if you want to like raise your hand? Second, any third years, fourth years? Okay, um, well, whatever, oh, so sorry guys. Whatever year you are, um, you can definitely start finding research, but we always recommend trying to do it sooner rather than later. Um, so if you're a freshman and you're already here, way to go. Um, and if you're somewhere in the middle of your years, that's still great as well. Um, I didn't find research till the end of my sophomore year, um, but that was perfectly fine. And, you know, I'm doing it now and loving it. So it doesn't really matter when you get in, but as soon as you can um, start looking and start trying to find a lab is great. Um, so we have a lot of different tools here at the Center for Undergraduate Research. Um, for looking for different opportunities. Um, so a lot of uh, the opportunities that come to us are put on both our listserv as well as our page on the website that is updated very frequently by the lovely Mrs. Moses you all see here. Um, and that has a lot of different either PIs or grad students or um, postdocs who are looking for undergraduates to get involved in their research um, and there are positions um, of all different types and of all different areas of research. So that's definitely a great tool to look out for. We'll send that in the follow-up email about this workshop, um, but definitely a great tool to use. There's also department websites. Um, so every different department at UF has a website um, with all of the professors that teach in it, as well as assistant professors. And a lot of times if you will um, find a list of professors that you might be interested in working with, you can then um, look into them and try to find different uh, types of research that they're doing. Um, we also have a Facebook page where we post a lot of announcements, so you might see some opportunities there. Um, and a lot of other different clubs have listservs as well where they'll send out things that are sent to them. Um, so whatever your major is, trying to get on to a listserv for your major, as well as for any clubs you might be involved at, maybe AMSA or um, Microbio or um, AG, there are all different kinds of clubs and listservs that send out a lot of valu valuable information like that. Um, so some of the things that are different this year um, with everything going on with COVID is there are some differences in how you can get into a lab as well as what kind of labs are accepting people. Um, so definitely uh, make sure that you, when you reach out to professors to try to get involved with their lab, you're asking them, you know, what are the new 
protocols for this year? Does this look like me being in the lab? Does this look like me being help me helping out with the research in some other capacity? Um, but talking with them and seeing what that looks like this year. Um, there's also a link here um, for a website that has some virtual opportunities to get involved with research. That's not necessarily at UF, but it was just a cool resource that we found. Um, so that might be something you might be interested in checking out, um, but it's not necessarily at UF. Um, and yeah. So one of the things that you're going to want to do when trying to find a PI um, is reading some of their papers to kind of show them your interest in finding research. Um, so basically, you don't want to just go to the PI and tell them that you're generally interested in research because what they want to know is that you are genuinely interested in the kind of research that their lab is doing. Um, they want to know that you're passionate about it and that you're interested in it and that you understand what it means to some capacity. Obviously, they don't expect you to you know, completely understand all the molecular genetics behind whatever it is they're doing. Um, but just having a general interest and a general um, ability to gauge the information is really important. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about this, Crystal? I forgot to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my experience, um, when I was looking for research, um, when I was just a freshman, I had no idea. Um, so I did what I thought would be the easiest option, which is to go through the abstracts. And I find a lot of the time, if you just go through the abstracts, you, you can understand the directions that the papers are taking. Um, they usually use more uh, layman terms, um, or there's just like a lack of scientific terms, like right at the, at the forefront of the paper, which really helps you get um, an understanding. It gives you a background. You know what you're expecting to read when you go into these papers. So if you're preparing to talk to a PI about about their research, reading the abstracts are your number one with the abstracts and, and kind of um, give them a little summary of what you've been learning about their research. And it shows that you're very interested in their work and that they'd, they'd be more likely to take you in their lab position because you're not just looking to me. You look like you wanna be engaged in a research lab. You're interested in the problems that your PI is, is, is finding, how they're solving them. And, and that, and that that you're under that you're interested in the in the process in the first place. Definitely. So once you've um, been able to read through some of their papers and get a firm understanding of you know what the lab does and that it's something that you'd be interested in, um, you're going to want to start trying to write emails to these professors um, so that you can hopefully get to talk with them and meet with them, and then hopefully then get to ask if they have any room in their lab and would be willing to accommodate you um, or have you a part of it. Um, so some things to keep in mind, um, you don't wanna make it too long. Um, professors get emails from students all the time, and if you send them a nine page paper about why you would be a great addition to their lab, even if it's all true and all great and well-written and everything, um, chances are they're just not going to take the time to read it. So make it short and sweet, um, but something that's enticing and uh, something that just stands out that you are interested in their research and you want to learn more. Um, adding your resume and CV can be a good option. Um, this may or may not be something you want to include in the first email, um, but this is definitely something to have on hand in case they ask for it. Um, so just introducing yourself, explaining why you want to research this topic, what you're studying, how it kind of relates to that. It doesn't have to relate to the research you want to do, um, but if it does, that's always a plus. Um, uh, and if it doesn't, that could be cool too, because you could show them that you could bring a new perspective to the lab. Um, but just closing it out with, um, I really am, you know, interested in your research. I would love to learn more about it and seeing if there's some way that you could set up maybe a Zoom meeting or a phone call with them. Um, to ask more about their research. Um, genuinely, the point of this whole email is kind of just showing them that this is something you're really interested in and, um, you know, that you want to learn more about the kind of problems that they're kind of trying to address. Um, yeah, so this is just a kind of an example email. Um, you can see here they have some transcripts and a resume. Like I said, this isn't super important um, in the first email, but good things to have on hand because they might ask for them. Um, addressing 
the professor as doctor if they are. Um, so just make sure you look into that and be sure you have the correct um, pronoun there um, and introducing yourself um, and see, you'll see that a big chunk of this is talking about their publications and their work. Um, so just making sure that you come across as interested in what they're doing first and foremost is I think the base step I would give for those emails. So uh, once you sent the email and maybe you uh, get a email back or schedule a Zoom meeting or something like that, um, you're going to want to um, prepare for that. Um, so Crystal, you want to go through that part? <laughs> Yeah, so like I mentioned, um, I got involved in research when I was a freshman. So I was very new to the field of research and academia at, as, as a whole. Um, and what I did before I was meeting with my first PI, because he's an adjunct professor, professor for the Department of Large Animal Sciences over at the veterinary hospital. Um, I went through all of his pub publications like a few days before and got myself a very solid foundation and a, a pretty general understanding of what he was researching. And then the night before I would do like kind of little flashcards. Um, I tried to I tried to find little facts and like little snippets of very useful information from the abstract. And then I paired it on flashcards with like the name of the publications. That way that they were at my disposal during the conversation, I could sprinkle the conversation and in with information that I had learned from his publication because that's how I showed that I'm I'm truly engaged in the work that he's doing because a PI isn't going to want a student in their lab that doesn't understand the direction of their work doesn't understand the scope of what they're the, of what they're trying to research so preparing to meet a professor is I primary it was primary pr primarily background knowledge on the research that I would go in to have a discussion about and like Ali said I'm we aren't going into these meetings with the assumption that they'll find a place for us in their research um, if anything you can go in expecting to have a really interesting conversation about research with a with a professor that knows the most about it because it's it's their work um, but you can have a really interesting conversation you can make good contact research um, and sometimes it won't be so when I first met with my PI I, I lucked out and he happened to need help with one of his project but um, other PIs that I've discussed their work with they they didn't need help at that time but they gave me contacts of people in other in other labs that did need help so I'm you're able to network a lot that way not only are you able to just learn more about the field that you're interested in you get to make contacts with the professors that are in the department of, of, of your interest but you also find opportunities like new research. So you get to learn new experiences. Yeah, definitely. I would also add to that, um, while obviously the most important part is showing that you're super interested in what they're doing in their work, um, if you do end up getting offered a position or um, it's something that they express might be available, just being sure that you also talk with them about what their expectations are for you as a researcher. Um, some PIs ask for a certain number of hours a week. Um, some PIs will give you certain tasks to do over a certain amount of time, um, but just make sure that you're upfront with them about what your schedule looks like and how much they're expecting of you. Um, and if it's entirely too much, you know, it's okay to say no to an opportunity and know that another one, um, there are so many other labs on campus that can be more accommodating to your schedule. So if one doesn't work, um, don't, you don't have to, you know, fight, you don't have to make it work if it's not going to as well, I mean, there. Um, just make sure you're upfront with them. And a lot of PIs will be, um, you know, open to that kind of discussion. Um, some other things, um, just making sure that you dress appropriately, remembering that while it is just a conversation, um, it could also be taken as an interview. So um, make sure you're dressing to impress them, um, you know, just being professional, um, professional attire. I know the career closet isn't currently open, um, but I know there are also a lot of other resources um, similar to that in Gainesville, so I'll try to link some of those in the follow-up email, um, but just making sure that you come looking professional and ready to talk about research. Um, so if you do end up getting a project, there are some ways that you can take research for credit. Um, you can take it for between zero and three credits, um, depending on how many you want to do and how much your PI does. Just note that the more credits you take, the more um, hours you will have to work out with your PI how much you're doing. So um, once you do get involved with research, make sure you talk with them if registering for credits is something that you're interested in. 
Um, and if you still have any questions, we will both be here after the workshop to chat with you guys and um, talk about any like specific questions you might have or um, things you want to share about like what you're doing to try to find research and we can maybe help you out with that a little bit. Um, but if you leave this meeting today and you still don't have enough resources, um, we also have peer advising, which is available Monday through Friday from 9.35 to 3.50 p.m. Um, it is at the link right here. I will put that in the follow-up email as well. Um, but it's online this semester. Um, we may be in person again in the spring or later, um, but as of right now, all of that's online. And all peer advising is, is just the opportunity to sit down and talk with someone who has already found research and has some tips to hopefully help you, um, you know, get through the process as well as you possibly can. Um, and there's no appointment needed for this. You just show up at the link and there'll be someone there to help you. Um, so our last thing is uh, Crystal wanted to talk a little bit about her experience as a first gen student um, and how research has been for her. So I'll leave you the floor, Crystal. Thanks. Um, so before we open up the floor for questions that about anything that you guys might have, I thought it might be useful to share a little bit of my research journey. Um, my main takeaways with this are I hope I hope through what I'm about to talk about that you see that research isn't this 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 perfect very linear trajectory of of finding a PI through like faculty pages emailing them after reading their abstracts and getting an immediate position there there can be some turbulence along the way you might not find the perfect lab your first try you might have to bounce around a few labs to find the the protocols the areas of the the, the field of, of study that you find the most interesting. Um, so when I first got involved in research, I was a freshman and I had no idea what I was doing in anything at all. I had no wet lab skills. I had no idea what PCR was. I didn't even know generally um, veterinary medicine research faculty. Um, I had no idea what any of their papers were talking about, um, but I felt that the longer that I looked with, at their abstracts and, and really focused on their department and, and just generally what they do for a living, um, I, I felt that it was easier to start talking about science. So it really, it really opened a lot of doors up for me to start reading scientific literature. Even if I didn't really know what they were talking about, I felt that I was capable of having a conversation with a professional, right, a doctor of their field. Um, which made me pretty nervous as, as any such intimidating meeting would be with, with someone that you don't know, but highly respect with their years of education and research under their belt. Um, so I met with my first PI after about a couple rounds of, of emailing PIs, um, over the summer before I started with UF. And he said that he had a position in the, in the lab and I was like, great. So I met him and I found out that the position that he had an opening for was online, basically. So it wasn't a wet lab like I had hoped and kind of thought that it would be based on his research and, and what I had read that he had published in the recent in like the last couple of years. Um, so it wasn't a wet lab. A lot of my research was based online. It was bioinformatics and basically a lot of statistical analysis that I hadn't necessarily worked with before. Um, but he was more than accommodating with the fact that I was brand new to UF. I was a freshman. I hadn't taken statistics and I really didn't know what his research was about. But he was really accommodating and he sent me links. He signed me up for extra classes online for, for lectures, for things that would help with the research. Um, he would send me YouTube videos all the time. He would draw out diagrams and he was just overall really helpful with guiding me along in his research projects just so that I could help him with future ones. So it was really nice to find like truly a mentor that wanted to guide me through this process of learning about about microbiology and bioinformatics, statistical analysis, what, what the gut microbiome is. Like I had never even heard of a microbiome before this person and now they're telling me how to analyze it statistically with data. So that was wild. Um, I actually won a scholarship for that research. Um, it, I, I won the University Research, research Scholars Program and we submitted 
um, we presented at the, re the Spring Symposium a couple of years ago, we published and, and now the project is essentially done. So, so where else was I supposed to go, right? I had all this time and no research to fill it anymore. So then began my third round of emailing PIs from all over the, basically the veterinary medicine department, small animal and large animal. So I found another PI that had an opening in his lab and this was actually a wet lab. So now I'm, I'm back from square one, essentially. Now I have all this bioinformatics and, and statistics under my belt. Now I'm in a new field and I have to learn everything all over again. And I'm right at the beginning of the learning curve. So I found my first wet lab. I learned what a pipette was. Um, I learned how to do PCR and everything that I'm super interested in now as a microbiology major. Um, and now I'm like, a little like semi formerly the lab manager there's a postdoc there and she handles a lot of like the ordering and and stocks and things like that but I, I take care of inventory and receiving shipments and basically a lot of like preparation for their protocols so I I do a lot of organizational stuff now which I love um but if I hadn't started experimenting with research in my freshman year I wouldn't have found a position that I love so much if I had just stopped with bioinformatics and said, this is what I know, this is where I'm going to take it. And if I had just found another PI that did bioinformatics research, I would have just learned that. But research gave me the opportunity to bounce around into a bunch of different little, little topics, little areas of interest that are under, that are within the scope of microbiology, but are perhaps more, more intricate, more detailed, or not necessarily related, like things like wet lab work and statistical analysis on my computer. Um, so after I got a bunch of wet lab experience, I started taking prerequisites, things like biology, biology lab, chemistry, chem lab. And I started to see that in these classes, um, no one else knew what a pipette was either. They didn't know how to run PCR. They didn't know how to do a lot of wet lab skills that I already had from doing research so early. So I found that research was the one way that as a first generation college student, I could kind of beat the learning curve of my classmates. Um, and it's really interesting that we come from like slightly disadvantaged backgrounds, but research allows you to get an edge in your education, which is so important so so crucial to finding where you want to be in your future it's, it's it's essential to getting into things like medical school dental school even veterinary school now is moving towards holistic approaches that want to see research and less maybe animal experience even though animal experience seems more relevant research is where medicine is going as a whole and things like um, graduate school, getting a PhD, they all revolve around research. So getting your foot in the door, getting this experience now is, is crucial to, to building a successful future, to, to contacting other, other people that may be able to find better positions for you that uh, more align with your subject interests or it's, it, it, get, it allows you to network. It's, research has been everything for me at the University of Florida. It's, it's all of my time every week. It's, it's all of my worries. It's all of my satisfaction. It's, research has been amazing. Um, and I really hope everyone that attends this workshop f has all the resources that they need to find research that they love, to find research that makes them join organizations like the Center for Undergraduate Research. Because research is revolutionary. That sounds so cliche and a little dorky, but I didn't think that I would love research when I got into it. It, it, was, it was hard. I had to do some extra work to keep up with what these, these doctors and professors were talking about. But now that I do, and now that I'm, I'm kind of at their level, at least with the protocols that I work on, I feel like a scientist. And that's really cool because as an undergraduate, you still kind of feel like a kid, but I'm in my own lab. I'm, I'm handling my own protocols. I'm helping with others. I just, I feel like such an adult research and that's all research. So um, yeah, research, um, highly recommend getting into research, especially now. Um, as your uh, first year or second year, when you have some spare time before your, your classes get a little bit harder, I definitely recommend getting your foot in the door with research. Um, and research opens a lot of other doors up too. For example, I do research with the large animal sciences department of veterinary medicine, and I do ultrasounds on cows and I take blood samples. So that's super cool. But the doctor that I work under doing that, he gave me contacts to Carson Springs Wildlife um, which is basically a, an exotic animal sanctuary. And I have an interview there next week. Um, so I'm very excited to start working with tigers and bears. And that's not research, you know, but I, but I found this information 
through networking, which research provided for me. So I really hope you guys, um, I hope research piques your interest enough to give it a little, a little try. Um, at least it's worth a round of messaging PIs and talking about their research just to truly understand where science comes from, how it's, how it's built, how it progresses, like everything about science stems from research. So especially if you're in a STEM field, re research is, is, I don't want to say unavoidable because that makes it sound unpleasant, but there's, there's no getting around research in STEM. Um, in non-STEM fields, research is just as important. I don't have a ton of experience with non-STEM research. Um, I did a little bit of anthropology research my second year. That was pretty cool. It was a lot of reading. Um, I got to say I prefer a wet lab, but no, no less important, no less useful than STEM research. Like there's no, there's no comparing. Research in any field is, is going to help your future in big, big ways. So um, that's all I have to share about my research. Um, if you guys have any questions about veterinary school, research, how to find a PI, how to find a lab, what to do when maybe you don't like your lab anymore and you, and you might want to move on to another opportunity, um, any questions at all, Allie and I will be here after the meeting or after the workshop. Um, we've got peer advising going on. Um, so we just, all the resources for your research related questions. Um, so does so does anyone have any questions? I don't see any in the ch chat. Okay, well, um, if you guys don't have also a first gen student, so I can completely understand that trying to find research and just trying to figure out even just what your major is 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 difficult, right? Because we. I mean, a, a lot of other students that were with in class, um, their parents were lawyers or their parents were doctors or their parents were scientists or then they're just trying to follow in footsteps. And then, you know, uh, first gen students have a tendency to just be forging a whole new path on their own. Um, I was also a non-traditional student. I didn't go back to school until I was over 30 years old. So I came to UF with a two-year degree from Santa Fe, got involved in research before I even left Santa Fe. Um, and it was a pivotal point in my academic and professional career to find research at UF. Um, my first research job was in plants, and I realized very quickly that I didn't like plants, but I did it anyways because I needed, um, just needed to get in campus, and I needed to meet people, and I needed to be able to network, and I can tell you that my first professional career job was because of that job. It was actually the wife of the PI at the UF lab, and I ended up getting a job there. Um, so even though you may end up getting into something that you don't like, and there you're gonna come across faculty, like Asia said, that are very much, they have expectations that we might not be able to meet as students. And they also are very, their, their research is their baby. Um, sometimes they don't want first gen or sometimes they don't, they don't want a new person to come in that's never had research experience before. And that's fine. And you kind of just have to accept that and roll with it. There are tons of faculty on campus that are going to want someone who's never learned anything before because they're going to want someone that they can teach and they can train um, their way right? They want you to do what they want to do. If you've already worked in another lab, there's a possibility you might do it a different way. Um, so don't think of it as a hindrance if you don't know what they're talking about, or if you, you know, maybe you're not asking the right questions. If I could give you any advice on that, it would just be try to look and read the paper as if you're already seeing what problem they're trying to solve. Right, so if they're doing research on breast cancer, what problem, specific problem are they trying to solve and how are they trying to solve it? And sometimes that may end up diving you into a little bit of the methods section. So that's what I would do. Um, I'd absolutely read the abstract, read the introduction and then read the conclusion <laughs> and then save the rest of the stuff for later. Um, once you understand the paper based off of those three things, then you can kind of look at what methods they're using. Like if it said PCR and you've never done PCR, then you can go watch a YouTube video on PCR and see what that actually means and then go from there. 
Um, that is exactly how I learned how to do most of the stuff I know how to do. Um, so don't just don't be shy. And if you have questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to me or any of the Curves people. If you're advising, uh, any of us will be glad to help. So I'm in my office nine to five, Monday through Friday for the most part. So I have no problem just giving you a pep talk if you need one. Hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ms. Moses.